Welcome back, Long Riders, to Friday. Today is Friday's video, and today we're going to teach you how to do a blue quill dry fly. And not your standard cat skills dry fly either. This is our version of a of the dry fly, the blue quill, and it's a kick butt fly, so you ain't going to want to miss it, and you ain't going to catch it anywhere else. You don't want to miss any other videos you can't catch anywhere else. Click right there for more videos and don't miss any of our awesome upcoming videos on flies. We're going to cover them all on everything fly fishing. So let's get to the vice right here. Oh, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. Let's get to the vice. <laughs> you and me, we meant to be in the great outdoors. I'm going to start this fly by debarbing the hook. And I just would not fish with people that didn't have debarbs. I'm telling you, wait till you catch a seagull or something on a dry fly or a bat. You're going to hope you had them flies debarbed. Now we're going to run our thread a little bit over halfway back. And we're going to head cement it. I don't know why I say head cement. That cracks me up every time. Everybody knows we use hard as nails, fingernail polish. So. Now we're going to use these uh, wings we used down. I think I showed you in the last video. If you haven't seen the last video, go back and check it out. I'll put something up here so you can see it. And it's a special wing, but we're going to use that. You could also use a gray or light gray, uh, just floating yarn or black yarn for the wing. Now you're going to start building up the body taper. You're going to add the tail. When you add the tail, it'll help build up the body too. All right, here's the wings. You can see down there there's an actual email address on here that I'm showing you. These are the wings I use. This is not a filling. We don't get anything by you buying them but they are awesome wings they were great color I have not yet to throw, find floating thread that matches the color as close so okay for the tail we're gonna use a light tan it's almost the same color as the uh, strip peacock curl we're gonna use for the body but we're gonna use this organza and you just kinda of peel it off and you only want like maybe, I don't know, three to five strands of this stuff. And you're going to tie that in for your tail. Now we're going to tie that all the way up. And you've seen it went up into the wing. We're going to leave that organza around that wing. And when we figure eight the wing... Some of that organza will be mixed in, mixed in, add a little sparkle to the wing. And then we're going to run it all the way back to the tail, measure it for the length of the hook. And I just pull it out, say, okay, that's about the length of the hook. Cut the tail off, and there you have your tail. And we're going to start building up the body because we're going to, like I said, we're going to use a peacock coral, and you want that body smooth. 
If you can't get your thread to be smooth, counterclockwise spin your bobbin and it'll flatten out your tying thread. And then, so you can make it really nice and smooth for your peacock. Okay, now we're going to tie in a strip peacock curl. Now I'm going to teach you, tell you, I, in the last video, I'm just, if you watch, watch both of them, you haven't go back and watch the other video. But I went to look for an old video and I must have got deleted off of YouTube. Um, they'll get rid of my videos if they don't have no response for a while. But anyway, all you do is you take, well, you pull it off the peacock. You just take one feather the peacock tail feather and you pull one strand off of it. Then you turn it with... And you want to take a pencil eraser and go towards where the part of that one strand that was attached to the feather itself. And when you go over there with an eraser, it'll just strip off all the hairs and make it a smooth, flat peacock curl. And that's what you, how you want to strip it to tie it in for the body. Okay, what you want to do is you want to put head cement on, and you don't want to quite let the head cement dry. You want it to be tacky, so when you wrap the peacock curl around, it kind of sticks to the body, and it will keep it from getting unraveled, unraveled easy. I think the fish cuts your peacock curl; it won't unravel on you as fast, make the more sturdier fly. So you want to wrap that peacock curl, wrap it as close as you can, wrap to wrap, all the way up to that wing and then tie it off. You can see here that the peacock curl broke. Now this is going to happen to you when you do peacock curl bodies. More than I admit, I want to admit that happens to me, but it happens. What you want to do, and I forgot to do this from the first one I did. Or no, I think I did show it to you. Maybe I did. It just broke. Is you want to lick your fingers and rub it over the peacock curl, and keep doing that, and get the peacock curl a little wet, and let it sit for a little bit, and it'll soften up so it won't break. But if this happens to you, untie your thread, untie the peacock curl, or just tie over if it's head cemented fast. Just put more thread wraps on and tie another one in and start, excuse me, start over.
Now you're going to pull the wing back, put some thread wraps on in the front of it to get the stand up. Then you want to figure eight it. And for you people that are new here that don't know how to figure eight it, imagine a figure eight. You're going to go around the outside of the ring, in between them this way. Then you're going to go around and in between them this way. And that will make the wing spread and stand out like this. When you look at them, they'll be like that. A little dubbing here uh, and to cover up them thread wraps so we're going to put a little bit behind the wing in front of the wing and uh, we can do a uh, dubbing dance again dub that's funny but anyway hope you like my dubbing dance comment below tell me did you like my dubbing dance we're going to dub that and go up to right behind the eyelet and then right behind that, all that we're gonna form a head, whip finish it. So that means we're gonna put some dubbing behind the wing, in front of the wing, and then we're gonna form a head, whip finish it, and that is it. Hey, this is a really nice fly. It's going to sit really right on the top of the water. It's going to be a nice profile to the fly. It's going to work. Trust me. You want to tie, now tie some of these up. When you tie these patterns up, I suggest you tie them in fours and fives. At least four. That way, if you lose one, you're not stuck the rest of the day without the fly that was catching all the fish. So let's take a closer look at this awesome fly. I want to take note here. You can see a little bit of gaps in between the wrapping of the, the peacock curl. This is a size 18. I couldn't see that with my eye. This camera is just much better than your eye. And that has never hindered fish before. And I'm sure I've done that before. Hope you like that fly. A couple notes on that fly. I always give you a little bit of bonus stuff you can catch at the only at the end of the video. So always make sure you stay to the end of our videos. Uh, people use deer hair for the same thing. You can use deer hair and you can make it all rainbow effect and put it on, you know. I want you to think outside of, the, of your typical pattern flies and think of other materials you could use. You know, you can use a black wing here, you could use a white wing. Who knows, maybe on your water, uh, white or black wing would work better. It, it's, you know, think out, do your own thinking, look at your own, your flies on the water when you make up your decisions. So, that's just my theory on it. And if you want to use deer hair, go back and tie it in without the synthetics and use the natural deer hair. Me, I like a lot work better with the synthetics. And these things, like I said, they float like crazy. We did, we used to tie elk hair caddises. And I did say, I, you know, I did catch deer or fish last year on the elk hair caddis. Last day of fishing, I killed them on an elk hair caddis. But earlier in the year, when the caddis was first coming off, we used these wings for a caddis wing going straight out. And they just slayed them. And you could catch a fish, put it in the water and go like that, and just kind of do that, and it would float right away again. You can't always do that with deer hair. So I'd like the synthetics for that, the floating, and it worked last year. These wings really worked. That's why we're bringing them to you with the wings now, because 
We stayed in with them last year. And wait, we're going to show you fishing videos. It's just still really cold out. It is only 20 some degrees outside this studio right now. So we haven't got to fishing. And we will be soon. It'll be 40 day, 40 degree days are coming. And we'll get out there and we'll fish the special regulations. In Pennsylvania, you can't fish any creeks unless it's a catch and release special regulation area right now until the first day of trout. December 30th it closes until I think it's April 14th, I think. I don't know exactly first day of trout. I don't get all involved in that because I usually fish the day before trout at the church and we'll take you there this year to show you that crazy action on that creek the day before trout season. We always do. goes the same place the day before trout season. And last year when we took these caddises, it was slaying them on that creek. So, tie yourself some up. And uh, thank you for being here to the end of the video. We always bring you a little bit more information, so make sure you stay. And uh, make sure you subscribe. Keep your lines wet, out of the trees, and only give them fish a sore lip.